Well, hello. Today we're going to be talking about my July favorites and uh, much of it is very similar to my June favorites, uh, but I do have some fun new stuff, some old like rediscovered things too in this list. So why don't we go ahead and jump right in. If you guys are new to my channel, what I like to do is kind of do a full face of my favorites. Of course, there are some other things in here that I couldn't kind of squeeze on, but anything that I do talk about that I do have on my face, I will do a split screen of me applying it so you guys can see the product in action. So let's go ahead and start with primer. I have basically rediscovered this Shantikai Ultra Sun Protection Sunscreen Broad Spectrum SPF 45 primer. So I started using this uh, at least a couple years ago, maybe three years ago at this point. I really, really enjoyed it. And then I ended up decluttering it because I felt like it was getting a little bit too old. And when it comes to SPF products, I feel like they really have to be fresh. Otherwise, there's really no effectiveness to the SPF. So I decluttered it. And you know, I'm always kind of testing out new, new primers, new products. Um, but Shantikai sent this bottle over to me and I just basically, it just kind of like rekindled my love for it because it makes your skin look really, really soft and smooth. And it has this kind of like blurring, but like more like a softening effect. I feel like it just makes my skin look very, very soft and healthy. And I love that it has an SPF 45 in here. And the other thing I noticed is I believe this has been reformulated because it used to smell a little odd. It never really bothered me too much, but it was definitely noticeable. I used to think it smelled like pickles. Now it has like rose water as its first ingredient. So it actually smells kind of nice. You can still smell the sunscreen in there a bit, but it smells like so much better than the old version. So I've really been enjoying this. And on days that I just need some SPF when I'm going out, I've been throwing this on because again, it just makes my skin look a little bit more perfected than just straight up SPF or nothing on my skin. So I've really been enjoying this and this is definitely a rediscover favorite of mine. And as you would guess, the perfect pairing to it is the Shantikai Just Skin Tinted Moisturizer. This has an SPF 15. So not enough, at least not in this Vegas sun, not enough on its own, but really great paired with an SPF 45. So I have both of these on today and I have this in the shade Vanilla. There are no shades or anything to this primer, by the way, it's just clear. It is very, very liquidy, so you do have to shake it up. It says that on the bottle, but just wanted to mention that. Uh, but this Just Skin Tinted Moisturizer is really, really lovely. It has just a creamy, lotion-y kind of texture. And I actually just talked about these in my Best Shantikai Products video. So you can see them uh, in action in that video as well. But I just have a nice, like kind of light, even layer of it on my skin. And while this does like the blurring and the softening and kind of preps your skin for makeup, this really does a nice job, you know, just evening out my skin tone. It is light, light medium. It's definitely buildable. I don't even know if you can build it up to like maybe a medium, maybe a medium coverage. And I really like, you know, how minimally perfected my skin looks. So this combo has been kind of like a rediscovered favorite of mine because I used to wear this combo all the time. And like I always say, I'm always like, you know, testing new stuff out or whatever. And so this has definitely fallen towards the back of my drawer, but I just love it. Absolutely love it. And it's great for the summertime with all the SPF. Um, in terms of concealer, really nothing new here. I feel like I've been going um, really hard with the La Prairie uh, Skin Caviar Perfecting or Perfect, Perfect Concealer. I have it in the shade two, which is a little bit light, but my self tanner has pretty much faded completely. And so this is working a little bit better <laughs> than it was when I first got it, but I just really enjoy this. And you know, the Dior Forever Skin Correct Concealer, I still really enjoy. I still really enjoy the Uma Beauty Stay Woke Concealer concealer, I think is the full name. Those have been like in my rotation and I've just really been enjoying it. But today the La Prairie is on and you know, I've mentioned a gazillion times when I've talked about this product, it really is kind of just like a skinted, a skinted. Wow. And this really is like a tinted eye cream. It just feels really great on the skin. The tip applicator on here is so cooling. And so before I even put the concealer down, I'll just kind of like run <laughs> the tip of this underneath my eyes just to kind of minimize any puffiness I have. I really do suffer from puffiness under the eyes. So I've really been enjoying this one. Nothing new. I mentioned this, I think in last month's favorites. So that's what I have on my eyes today. All right powders. So I'm really excited about this month's powders because I have two pressed powders that I've been using a lot. And 
I, you know, I have, I have a very long history with powders. I used to only use pressed powders. I really didn't understand loose powders. They always looked very, very cakey and drying on my skin. And it was like, as soon as I was able to test out a bunch of loose powders and really get into it and like figure out how best to apply them onto my skin, I fell in love with them. That, you know, I thought they looked so much better than pressed powders. And I've been using them not exclusively because there definitely are pressed powders that I really, really love, but I seem to always kind of reach for them. If I'm in a rush or whatever, they seem to be my default. But this month I have two pressed powders and I'm just kind of reminded about how much more convenient they are. And it seems like these days, the past few, several months, I've really just been about ease <laughs> and convenience and, you know, just not putting too much time into my makeup, just, you know, doing it enough so that I look polished. So the first pressed powder I want to talk about is the By Terry Hyaluronic Pressed Hydro Powder. So by Terry is known for her loose hyaluronic hydro powder and she came out with them in tinted form. Anyway, she's just come out with this powder in pressed form and this is in like the original like translucent white, which is basically colorless and at least that's what they call it. I find that it gives me like a like the teensiest bit of like a white cast whenever I apply it, but it is very, very faint. And the way I apply um, her hydro powder is I use my finger and I use it just to set like my eye area, my concealer basically. So I'll just grab a little bit on my finger and then I'll press it in to my under eye area. Otherwise I find this powder, if I use just like a hint too much, I will all of a sudden look a little bit on the drier side and I don't like that. I have very dry skin. So when it comes to this pressed powder, I feel like I actually need a little bit less of it than the loose powder. The loose powder, I can kind of carelessly go in and just kind of pick up some powder and, you know, kind of tap off any extra and just go right in and kind of tap, tap, tap. When it comes to this powder, I feel like I have to be pretty careful. I'll just like run my finger over the pan and I'll just make sure I don't have too much. And then I'll really kind of like press it in, press and roll with my finger and it just really does a wonderful job like blurring. My under eyes look flawless. They become mattified. I'm not a fan of like um, like a, a lit sort of like under eye. I know some people really like that. I don't, I think it just makes me look sweaty. So I really, really like this pressed powder. I feel like it's a concentrated version of the loose powder. So I need less of it. And yeah, it works just as well as the loose powder. So was very, very pleased with that. And the other pressed powder that I've been using, and this I've been using to set all over my face, is this Dior, Dior Skin Mineral Nude Matte, and I have it in the shade 02. This is not a new product, but Dior sent this over to me to play around with, and I really fell in love with it. So I set my entire face with this powder today, and it's just, it's really, really light. It's just, it's very fine. I don't feel like there's, uh, you know, any kind of coverage or any thick to it. It's just very, very weightless. And I love it because it is matte and it just sets my makeup. Like it doesn't do anything else. And you guys know when it comes to setting powder, that's all I want it to do. I just want it to set my makeup. I don't want it to add any shine, add any color or anything like that. And that's exactly what this powder does. It's really beautiful. So I'm so excited that I have these two pressed powders in my collection now, because like I said, they're so much more convenient than loose powders, even though I still love my loose powders. Okay, bronzers. I feel like I've been talking about bronzers all summer, so I didn't wanna repeat myself, but I did want to talk about the Gucci bronzer. So I do have this on my face today. I love the formula. Uh, this shade, number three, now that my self tan is gone, is a little bit, it's a little bit warm for me. As long as I'm careful and as long as I blend it out, I think it's perfectly fine. I think it looks, you know, lovely. And what I love about the formula so much is that it's just, you know, it's a basic kind of pressed powder formula, but there's a little bit of a creaminess to it. It actually kind of reminds me of the Tom Ford Glow Bronzers, the latest edition of the Tom Ford Bronzers. It has that kind of like soft pressed powder feel, but it's almost like creamy. And so when you apply it to the skin, it almost like kind of melds into your skin. And as you like buff it in, you can see it kind of like, I don't know, almost act like a cream. And it's really, really beautiful. I love it. The only thing, only thing I don't like about this bronzer is the fragrance. And I've talked about this. It has just a very, it kind of just smells like play makeup, like makeup I had when I was like really little, you know, and they would like 
add a little bit of fragrance. That's what it kind of smells like to me. I'm just not a fan. It's okay. It dissipates very, very quickly. It's not like it lingers. It's not overbearing. I would just personally prefer that it didn't have any fragrance. <laughs> but other than that, I think it is a lovely bronzer. I love this packaging. I mean, can it get any more retro chic than this packaging? Okay, moving on to blushes. I have quite a few blushes to talk about. So I'm gonna start with what I have on my cheeks. I have the Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk Lip and Cheek Glow. I have the color of Dreams on, which is the lighter of the two. So there's only two shades. And I did a dedicated video to these two, so I'll link it down below if you're interested. But here is Color of Dreams, and here is Color of Passion. And I I just really enjoy this formula. So I applied the Color of Dreams pretty much on top of my powder, on top of the bronzer and everything, and it works beautifully. It also works beautifully just on top of foundation. If you wanna add it on before you, you know, kind of set your makeup, you can do that too. I've tried it that way. It works great. And what I really enjoy about this particular formula is that I think it works really, really well on the cheeks and the lips. I have a lot of cream products that can be used for both. You know, they're kind of marketed to be used for both, but I never like it for both. There's always like one way I prefer more than the other. So if it's really kind of emollient and like nourishing, it's great for the lips, but then it's too gooey for the cheeks. Um, and for the cheeks, if it's too like powdery, like a cream to powder kind of formula, which is great for the cheeks, it stays put. It feels a little bit too dry on the lips. This formula actually feels and works really, really well in both places. And it really surprised me. And in my video, which was like a first impressions, I was like, wow, I, I think I like it for both. But I wasn't sure if that was kind of a fluke. So I've been using it for both, you know, here and there or whatever. And I'm like, no, I really, really like it for cheeks and for lips. I mean, I, I surprised myself. So I've really been enjoying these. I have definitely been reaching for the color of dreams, the lighter one, more than the color of passion, but this one is just as beautiful. I just think it's probably something I'm gonna reach for in the fall winter more. Some other blushes I have been reaching for, this one I definitely talked about last month, but I'm gonna talk about it again because I love it so much. This is that Dior uh, Rouge Blush in color 219. Whew, this is just fantastic, absolutely gorgeous. The formula is beautiful. It feels like velvet, and then this shade is just, really, really fresh looking. It has like a slight kind of like metallic gold duochrome to it. So it can double kind of as a highlight if you kind of brush it all over your cheeks. If you're generous with the application, you can definitely like forego highlight. It's it's beautiful. I've definitely talked about this a lot, so I'm just gonna move on. Um, but the other Dior blush that I have really been enjoying, and it's such a unique shade, at least for me in my collection, is this Dior Backstage Rosy Glow in 004 Coral. And this is just such a fun, bright, like, orange sorbet kind of color. It's so, so pretty. And, you know, I really wasn't sure what it was gonna look like actually when I put it on my cheeks, but it's so much fun. It's it's just, it's really, really beautiful. So I've been enjoying this one too and really liking the idea of like playing around with like different blush shades. So that has been wonderful. All right, next up I have a couple face palettes. Uh, first, I wanna talk about this NARS Orgasm X face palette. I only like two products in here, the highlight, whoa, the highlight <laughs> and the Orgasm X blush. So I have this highlight down on my cheeks and it is show-stopping, it's gorgeous, it's wet looking. So there is the NARS highlight, isn't that just, oh, I love it. And the tone is perfect for my skin tone. It has just a little bit of warmth, but it's not too yellow and, oh, the reflection is just, Oh, it's so smooth, but there's like no micro glitters. I love it. I just love it. This Orgasm X blush, I just put a little bit of it onto the apples of my cheeks, uh, which I don't think I filmed. I apologize. I just kind of, you know, added it on on a whim. So that's what's on the apples of my cheeks. But let me go ahead and swatch all these. Um, I'm not the biggest fan of Orgasm blush. I know I'm in the minority there, but it just doesn't work. I don't think for my skin tone. So here are the three shades. There's the highlight, there's Orgasm X. So pretty, so, so pretty. So I've really been enjoying this face palette from NARS. Very, very nice. All right, the other face palette I wanna talk about is the Natasha Denona Bronze Cheek 
face glow palette now i <laughs> i like i have gone back and forth in my mind about this palette i'm like mm, it's okay or oh i love this palette or you know this really doesn't work i don't know i don't know what it is i don't know if i'm i'm still trying to figure out how best to use it for myself but this shade I decided it's just it's just way too warm for me, at least for my cheeks. It would be a great copper eyeshadow shade if that's what I want to use it for. But for my cheeks as a bronzer, it's much too bright. So that I don't use too much. And then this Super Glow Nude shade is a little bit too deep as highlight and a little bit too golden and highlighty for bronze. So it's another one of those interesting products. I'm trying to like figure out how best I can use it on my face. I have like just kind of used it as like a bronze highlight where I'll just kind of tap it very lightly over my bronze area just to give it some shimmer. That works out well, but the tone still is a little bit, it's very warm. It has like a very strong kind of like yellow kind of gold undertone to it. So I don't use that one too much either. Again, I think it'll be great on the eyes, but I've really been focusing on my face with this palette. So the reason why I'm even talking about this palette in my favorites is because of this Bounce Cream Glow product. That's this one right here. I love this product. So it has an interesting kind of like bouncy texture to it. It's almost, it's not just cream, it's like putty-like. So it's a little bit denser than just straight up cream, not quite as emollient, but it's the color. It's the like really interesting kind of shift that it has. It is like gold and then there's a little bit of pink, there's a little bit of peach. I just think it's so pretty. It's really pretty on the cheeks. It's really pretty on the eyes. And I absolutely love it. I wish, <laughs> I wish she would sell just this pan right here instead of, you know, having to get the entire palette for that because that to me is like really the standout product in this palette. And I love it. I can't stop using this one product. Okay, eyebrows. I very, very rarely do I talk about eyebrow products because I'm always using the Tom Ford Fiber Brow Gel, which I still use very, very consistently. Um, I think the last time I talked about a different brow product was when I talked about the Chanel Compact, the one with the two products, the wax and the powder. That was probably earlier this year. But anyway, we have a new brow favorite and it is the Gucci Pencil. So I was really excited and really intrigued to try this product earlier in the month because um, I read the description and it was like a powder pencil. And I was like, ooh, I love powder pencils. Very, very old school. They don't really make powder pencils uh, very much these days. They're either coal or gel. So I was very, very intrigued by this and I love it. It gives them obviously some structure and color and fills in patch, you know, everything you want a brow pencil to do, but there's a softness to it because of the powder formula. I'm just trying to get like a nice swatch for you guys to see. So I have it in the shade 04. So that's like me just kind of grazing the pencil over my hand. It just, see that like soft look? It doesn't look waxy. It just looks like, I don't know if you, any of you guys draw out there, but it's like using a charcoal pencil to draw instead of just like a normal pencil or, you know, obviously a crayon or anything like that that's waxier. But it just has like such a fun, soft look to it. And I really like that for the brows. So I've been loving this brow pencil from Gucci. Go figure. And then another eye pencil that I've really been enjoying, and this again is like such a strange product for me to be talking about, but I really, really love it. And I have it in my waterline today. It's the Chantikai Brightening Eye Kajal. This is like not a new trick or anything, but I always see YouTubers adding kind of like a light color to their waterline and it brightens the eyes. It makes them look more awake, this and that. And I've always tried it and it's always, <laughs> it's always made me at least feel like I look very, very odd. And it makes me very uncomfortable because when I look at myself in the mirror, I feel like that's all I can see. And I've realized it's because the, the tone of the color of the pencils that I've been trying have been off. Of course, the first one I ever tried was like just white and it looked so stark. I mean, it looked like I just took white out to like my lower lash line. And I was like, okay, that's not it. And I've tried other ones and they're just, you know, too peach. And I feel like that's very obvious. This shade, it's just right in the middle. Like, I don't know if there's like this balance between like having to match maybe your skin tone and, you know, the whites of your eyes. If that's like what you're going for, at least in my book for something like 
that's effective but very natural looking. So I've been really, really loving this and it stays put in my waterline. It doesn't fade, it doesn't smear or smudge or do anything weird and it goes on really, really easily. And I'm just like loving this little trick. I'm about 50 years too late, but yeah, this, this pencil really kind of changed the game for me. All right, in terms of eyeshadows, I have still really been enjoying the Westman Atelier iPods, both shades, I love them. And I think using these iPods has kind of like rekindled my going to like my little potted eyeshadows. And the one I've been using the most is the Chanel Illusion Dombre in 95 Mirage. So that's what I have on my eyes today. And this is the shade here. Let me do a swatch for you. But it's just one of those really beautiful single shadow looks. And it's just really easy. I'll either use my fingers or I'll use like one of my favorite um, brushes for cream shadows, either my Sony G Worker 2 or my Baby Blender brush from Westman Atelier. It's so great. I feel completely polished and done and everything with just like the ease of one shadow. And there's something about the cream formula that I feel like, I don't know, maybe it's just mental or whatever, but it feels like it's just so much easier to put on than like a powder shadow. So I've just been reaching, you know, for the Westman Atelier iPods and this Mirage from Chanel. So that's it with eyeshadows. I've been really, really simple with my eyeshadow looks. And in fact, I've been like, not really always applying eyeliner, not really always applying mascara. I do have some mascara on today, nothing new to talk about. So let's just move on to lips. I do have a few lip products to talk about. Again, and I think I mentioned this in my All About My Lipstick collection, because I feel like I'm constantly rotating my lip products, I feel like it's hard to pick out like a favorite, like a standout, but there are a few that I feel like I've been reaching for a little bit more than others. Uh, one is nothing new. This is kind of like a rediscovered favorite, but this is the Chantecaille Lip Veil in Frangipani, and it's just, well, I love the Lip Veil formula full stop. It's nourishing, it's moisturizing, it's comfortable, it just feels so good. And then this color is just the perfect like summertime color. It's bright, it's definitely one of those lipsticks I feel like if I don't have much else going on, especially, you know, when I'm doing just that single shadow look, this is great. It just adds like all the color that I need. So that has definitely been a favorite. And then the lip glosses that I've been loving, and I have one of them on now, are the new lip glosses from Sisley. These are the Le Fito Gloss. And I picked out one and number seven because these are definitely the two that I've been reaching for the most. So number seven is what I have on my lips. And this is just the most perfect, like nude color. It just does a nice job like enhancing my natural lip color. It gives my lips like just enough shine. It's not too crazy, it's not too over the top. I really love this one for like every day. This number one you can see is like white in tone, so it has like this milky appearance. And so I like that on some days and it really makes for a nice topper too. So this one has a little bit more like glitz to it. There's a little bit more micro glitter going on where this is a bit of a smoother sort of metallic finish. And then this one has like micro glitters. And as for the formula, I'm probably gonna say the same things that I did for the lip veil. It's just incredibly, incredibly moisturizing and nourishing. And I feel like there are a lot of lip products out there that feel moisturizing, but when I take them off at the end of the day, I don't necessarily feel like my lips are moisturized. They just aren't necessarily dry. You know, it's not like they got dried out, but I don't feel like I did good for them all day by wearing whatever lip product it was. But with these two, when I take these products off at the end of the day, my lips feel better than they did. And I think that kind of formula is very hard to find. And I also don't have, like sometimes when I put on a very nourishing or moisturizing kind of lip product, my lips will just peel from it, but my lips never peel from this lip gloss or the lip veil from Chantecaille. They just feel like super plump at the end of the day. So loving these two glosses, loving these two lip products, just big, big wins for me. So every month I do this video and every month I feel like I forget something. And I also feel like I've been talking for two hours. So we're just gonna end it there. Thank you so, so much for tuning in. Let me know what some of your favorites are down below in the comment section. I would love to hear from you. And subscribe if you haven't already. I would love that. And I will see you in my next video.